to our interview with the second guest of the day. I am now joined by Ismail Omikudon, the media aide to former governor of Oshun State, Adegwega Oyetola, on the state of debt in the Southwest State. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. Uh, can you hear me very well, Mr. Omikudon? Yes, I can hear you. All can right. you hear me? Uh, yes, Governor Deleke has accused the administration of former Governor Oyetola of leaving the debt of 407.32 billion debts. Tell us the true state of things. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, I think uh, the Governor and his team uh, probably are out to smear the person and personality of uh, Adegbo Egaoyitola. Why do I say so? Uh, you cannot tell us when a debt will be liquidated without telling us when the debt was taken. They were just being clever by half by publishing only the dates of the liquid, uh, liquidation of those debts without telling us dates of procurement. And they did that deliberately because they know that if they had provided the dates of procurement, Nigerians would know at a glance who did what. I make bold to say that the amount being claimed as debt were never procured under Adegbo Egawitola for the four years it governed the state. And this fact can be verified. That was why I challenged them to please be courageous enough to publish the details of the dates of the procurement of all those debts. We left Oshun with 14 billion cash. We also paid 97 billion from the debts. And we stated very clearly that even though for these four years, we never took any bank facility, like every other state in the Federation, we also benefited from 3 billion monthly intervention for six months from federal government. Probably that is the 18 billion they are claiming was assessed after July 16 election. And I say that is another fallacy. Because if you look at the table they released by themselves, if you go to item seven on that table, they captured it there that uh, there was a certain uh, budget uh, support from federal government to run from December 2021. Where they got another 18 billion from, I do not know. All right, but you call them fallacy. Uh, and I'm going to ask, are there documents backing these claims? Of course, they themselves, they have access to the document, but they have refused to make, make disclosure to the members of the public deliberately because they want to blackmail Oyetola. Otherwise, my sister is very clear. This program is starting 8 o'clock. It will end by 9 o'clock. How can you just tell us when the program will end without telling us when the program will start? It means you are hiding something up in the show. So, they publish the dates when those debts will be liquidated, but they cleverly avoided the dates when those debts were procured. So if they had provided the dates when those debts were procured, the, their objective of blackmailing uh, Oyotola would have fallen flat on their faces. And so that was why they hid that from the members of the public. The records are there. It was Aregba Shola, who took most of those loans, beginning from 2013 up to 2017. The records are there. And this same government also have the records. But deliberately, they have decided to hide that from the members of the public. All right, then. Um, Governor Adeleke once said, or Yotola rather, once said he left about 14 billion naira for the new administration. But Governor Adeleke has denied this. So I'm asking, who is telling what? Thank you. Um, on November 27th, when Governor Adeleke took over, he announced to the whole world that he was frozen all the accounts of the state government. Uh, 
up to this evening that I am speaking to you, they have not told anybody anywhere that they, are, or they have unfrozen their accounts. Yet they have been having access to state funds. So how are they assessing state funds? That is to tell you that these people are very, very inconsistent and that they are used and that they are used to lying. Again, only yesterday, the spokesperson of the governor for the first time admitted that they met some money, but that after paying November salary, the treasury was empty. But they failed to tell the members of the public how much they used to pay the November salary. And like I challenged him yesterday, he claimed that they have paid all the workers. And I said, me, Ismail Lumikwina, is here to receive my November salary because I worked up to November 26th. And I am aware that most workers, not political appointees, most workers in Oshun are here to receive their November salary. So if indeed they are telling the truth, they should also have come forward to let us know how much they used to pay the November salary. Don't forget that we signed off on the November salary before we left office, before we left, left office. But they connived with the accountant general to ensure that workers don't get that salary. And let me also add that the November salary we signed included those workers that were engaged shortly before we left the office. So therefore, if they are claiming that they have paid November salary and treasury is empty, it means some persons have played games with the amount we left behind because the amount we left behind was supposed to cover not only the workers who were paying before, but the new workers that came on board. So, and I am aware that they have not paid any new worker. As a matter of fact, those of us who are even old workers have not been paid. So I'm sure by yourself, you can deduce who is lying between the two of us. Okay, uh, was your principal really silent on the amount of debt he met before assuming office? Because many say if he had made all of this public, maybe he could have reduced this bickering. Well, let me state clearly that as a government, we knew that Oshun citizens never voted for us to lament and make excuses. And that was why as soon as we came in, we just drew the line and forge ahead to work for the good and betterment of the state. And that was why for the four years we spent, you never hear us lament about the level of indebtedness of Oshun. But if you ask people who know very well, till the time we left office, they were amazed as to how we were able to pay salaries consistently for four years without taking any bank facility. We were able to build roads, about 500 kilometers of roads, without taking any bank facility. We were able to build hospitals, we built primary health care centers, and most of the roads we built were roads that had been abandoned for close to 33, 44 years. So we were, we knew we were not voted in to complain, to lament, to make excuses, and that was why we did what we did. But the debts, uh, the level of indebtedness of Oshun has always been in the public domain. It's something you can assess even from the DMO. So, he, I mean, he, I wouldn't say we were silent on it deliberately, but we didn't want to be distracted. But the people of Oshun know who took those loans. It will interest you to know that the Commissioner for Finance, uh, Wale Bolon Uduo, who was with Arab Shola when most of these debts were incurred, is today a member of the PDP and is alive. They should call him to come and explain how they took the first uh, 30 billion uh, 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 loan they took. He's alive. He has all the records too. All right. So uh, on behalf of Nigerians, what do we make of this bickering by the former and current administration? 
Well, uh, for us, we showed clearly that we are a people that are interested in the growth and development of Oshun. And we demonstrated that throughout the four years we spent in the state. Uh, if you recall the NSAS protest, apart from Lagos State, Oshun was probably uh, one of the states that was the worst hit. My principal and some members of his team, including my humble self, escaped that by mere whiskers. But we didn't make any issue out of it. For four years, Oyotola will go down in history as the first governor that will govern Oshun for four years and we will not witness labor unrest for one second. Therefore, from the one, we stated it clearly that Senator Ademola Adeleke is not prepared for governance. This was a man who, after he was declared winner of the election, which we are challenging in court, set up a transition committee and charged the transition committee to give him programs that he will execute within the 400 days in office. A man who wanted to be governor in 2018, who also ran for governor in 2022, before he was declared winner, is asking the transition committee to give him programs that he will implement within the first 100 days in office. What does that tell you of that type of a person? It shows clearly that the man is not prepared for office. And that is why they are doing what they are doing to prepare grants for the failure that is already staring them in the face. They promised to clear the half salary owed by Arriba Shola within the first six months in office. Now they have spent close to 20 days in office. They have not told anyone how they want to do that. Yesterday, his spokesperson was asked how they want to grow the IGR out. He couldn't say anything. We grew the IGR from 9 billion to 20 billion. So for us, we are interested in the peaceful coexistence of all the segments of Oshun. We are interested in the peace and growth of Oshun. And right. we will be willing and ready to offer any advice if they are indeed interested in any. But from the way they started off, you will know that clearly these people are not ready for serious business. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Ismail Omikwido, the media editor, former governor of Oshun State, Adeboyega Oyetola. And we do hope that the people of Oshun State get the more clarification as the days go by. Thank you very much for joining us on Politics Tonight.